So in this video, we're going to make this image and then I'm also going to show you how to create a whole bunch of um, grasses and lots and lots of uh, objects and Omniverse is running smooth as. So in this video, let's go through using the paint tool. Now I've just loaded up an asset map that I have. It's got a whole bunch of assets in here and this is what we're going to be utilizing to creating what we saw just before. Now the first thing we need to do is make sure we're in the prim mode of selection. So if I click on this log, we can see that we're selecting the prim or the kind of like the empty attached to the model. Where if I click up here in the top left and we select an object, you can see that we're selecting the mesh. I don't want mesh. I want primitives. So we can see that. Now we need to open up the paint tool over here on the left hand side, paint, and then the right hand panel appears. Now, first things first, let's make sure we disable any sort of painting and erasing. We don't want to paint at the moment. The very first thing we need to do is make sure we've got an object selected, which is going to be this ground plane. You can see that we've got it selected. Now I can select paint and then we can go ahead and draw. Now I was already fiddling around with this. So the, so the brush size is pretty big by default. It's hundred. With these blue squares, this is what sets it back to default. And this is what default looks like. So straight off the bat, we've got a very nice covering of grass. And we're in real time at the moment. If we were to jump in up here and select interactive path tracing, this is what it looks like with the whole kit and caboodle. So I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, we've, there's a couple of thousand strands of grass here and uh, it's holding up quite well. However, you can see that it's very bland. It's just grass. So let's kind of create our own library. Now I've just switched back to interactive mode and we've got all these little plants here. Let's turn off paint. I'm gonna go into the paint library and just double click on scatter. And from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna highlight everything I wanna add. This is gonna take a little bit because there's quite a few items and then just go add asset. And so now you can see all the assets have been added into our library. Let's just have a quick through go through and make sure that we haven't added anything we don't want probably the cube three the ground plane we've added the environment map we've added let's make sure we get rid of that one because that's just going to spawn everything also the model three which i know is the ground from experience and so now if we kind of head back into our grassy meadow area i'm going to select the ground again now i can go into paint and then we can add extra bits and bobs to the land grass meadow whatever you want to call it and there we go you can kind of see how it's also randomizing the rotation that is pretty good obviously we've got trees in the background as well we can do a separate library for trees however it does come with a tree library so let's throw a tree library in we can see the brush size is 100 the density is 10 and the stamp intervals a lot further away select the ground paint and then we can draw trees down and uh, we're slowly creating a forest and obviously you, know, you can tell how many um vertices and meshes and faces <laughs> how much data is on these trees we can go crazy let's go density per stamp at 10 stamp interval let's bring it back down to one uh we might bring this up to 500 size i really want to push this now 50 so we're just going to be planting trees every and uh, yeah, there you go. We uh, we created a mini forest. Let's come into here. I'm just going to turn off paint. Real time interactive. There we go. RTX path tracing. Um, I am going to change the sky texture. So over here, we're going to go into environment. We're not going to use these top ones. We are going to select something nice and bright. Maybe noon grass. That one seems pretty good. Put that into there. Let's change to a camera. So I'm going to click on perspective cameras do we have cameras we don't have any cameras but i can create from view and so now we're looking at a camera if i like this position and i don't want to change it i can always highlight the camera and then select the lock button and now i can no longer move it beautiful feature uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump back to perspective uh, let's go back into real time just to make our life a little bit easier i might grab maybe this set of logs reposition it uh so just give me a sec and so i kind of now moved a few things around if i click up here on the top we can see that we've got a few more camera options now if i click on this thing and then select our a frame here let's open up our shutter to i don't know one 
Yeah, let's go 0.5, why not? Let's go really big depth of field. Let's now jump over into the render settings. I'm gonna jump over into sampling in cache. Make sure we're in the right render, so we're in interactive. Let's turn off caching and many light sampling into common. Don't really need a fog, don't really need global villa. <laughs> I think that's fine. Let's go into post-processing. Mm, bloom should blow everything out. That's fine. The scale, I'm going to bring that down. That's a little bit extreme. So if you double click, now you can change it manually. I'm just going to change it maybe 0.2 so there is a little bit of bloom. Um, there's not going to be any motion blur. Um, that's about it. I'm, ooh. I am liking this chromatic aberration. So if I turn that on, we can see how we get that chromatic aberration effect. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. But here we can change it. Whoops, let's go back to default. So if you're double clicking and it's not changing numbers, what you can actually do is control left click and then that'll allow you to type it in. So control left click, uh, let's go one. And I'm fairly happy with how that is looking. From here we go up into window rendering. Here we go and movie capture. So what we wanna look at is I'm not worrying about the animation. Um, we've got the right camera selected already. There's the picture thing. What's it called? The resolution says it right there. Well done, Marco. The render preset, we've got to make sure we change that to interactive path tracing. Down here, subframes per frame. Uh, we'll bump that up to 128. So that's kind of like the sampling. Place it where you want to place it. Um, override existing frame. Now nah, let's not check it. And uh, I'm just going to capture current frame. And there we have it. Pretty schmick.